So I got a question for you. When you go to the grocery store and you have your choice of produce, let's say you need some tomatoes for dinner. Are you going to choose this tomato, the big, plump, juicy, ripe, red, round tomato, or are you going to pick up this tomato? Yeah, this tomato. You know, you know the one. The one that's small, kind of shriveled up. You know, it's uh, it's oozy. Mm -hmm. Think about it. You've seen it before. It's kind of got some weird colors on it. You can pick that tomato or you can pick the ripe one. That's right. You're going to pick the big, ripe, juicy tomato. And why? Because it looks more appetizing. You can choose that one because you think it's going to taste better. You know it's true, even if you're trying to be like all clever right now, you would buy that one. You're not going to buy the other one. So now let's take it to another place. Let's imagine that you are the tomato farmer. Because, yeah, there's people on earth that grow tomatoes, so you can go to the store and eat tomatoes uh, or buy tomatoes so that you can eat them. And every year that farmer harvests the seeds from the yearly crop. He takes a few of the tomatoes and takes the seeds out of them and plants them for the next year. Now, if you're the farmer, which tomato are you going to choose to harvest seeds from? Now, I understand some people are like, well, I wouldn't take the big one because that's the one people want to buy. But understand that there's going to be a plant that makes the tomato and a bunch of really big, ripe, beautiful tomatoes. There's another plant that's going to make some of those, like, nasty-looking potatoes or tomatoes, sorry. So which one are you going to pick? That's right. You're going to pick that one because you know if you plant those seeds next year and you get more of those plants, more people are going to buy them and you're going to make more money. You want your tomato plants to make the biggest, most beautiful, glorious tomatoes that exist so you can make the most money. Humans have been doing this for thousands of years and this process is called artificial selection or selective breeding. We've talked about natural selection, but I got news for you. Tomatoes did not get here in the grocery store the way that you buy them because they naturally happened that way. What happened is that humans intervened and picked the parents with the desirable traits to get the offspring that they want with desirable traits. So if you were to go and find a natural wild tomato plant growing in Central or South America, because that's where they're from, you would find a plant with these like shrivelly little small, wrinkly, pretty bitter fruits on them that you wouldn't even think remotely resembled a tomato. But over hundreds of years of artificial selection of humans taking those seeds, planting them, picking the ones that were the biggest and the most tasty and everything, planting them next year and doing it over and over for hundreds of years, now we have tomato plants that make big, round, juicy, delicious tomatoes. That's not just nature. That's humans picking the traits that they wanted in the plants that they wanted to be able to grow. So let's take another example. Here I have the wolf. And um, the wolf, once upon a time, met this thing called man. And at first they were enemies because they're both hunters and they both kind of um, were competing over similar resources in the environment and man would hunt the wolves and kill their babies and wolves would hunt the mans and kill their babies. But about 10,000 years ago, they started living in a mutualistic um, relationship because they both need a pack for security, and they're both hunters. So what probably happened is a man found, like, some wolf puppy that was abandoned and took it in, and then the wolf puppy just kind of hooked on to the man, and then everybody wanted a wolf puppy because they were super awesome and they were helpful hunters, and then people just started having dogs. But humans started selectively breeding the wolves to make all the different dog breeds that exist today. Every single dog that we have on the face of this planet can trace its lineage back to the wolf. Now, some animals, that makes sense. Like, if you looked at a husky, a husky pretty much looks like a wolf. So you're like, yeah, I totally see that connection. That's cool. I believe you. Fine. And then you see a dog like a Labrador, which... You know, for my students, you guys know I have, like, super soft spot from a Labrador. So, Labradors, you can even go, hmm, all right, maybe, kind of looks like a wolf, I guess. But then we get to things like Shih Tzus, and particularly in the case of a wiener dog, how in the world did a wolf become a wiener dog? There's no way, right? 
There's no way the wolf became a wiener dog. Does it mean that somewhere along the line that somebody found a wiener wolf out in the wilderness and then they took the wiener wolf and made it into a wiener dog? No, that's not how it happened at all. So let's talk about how the wolf became the wiener dog. Now we've learned with natural selection that there's natural variation within a wolf population. Some wolves are going to be born with pretty long legs, and some wolves are going to be born with pretty short legs, and there's going to be variation within any litter of puppies and with any population of wolves. Um, and so let's say that you are a man, a hunter or woman, that needs an animal to help you hunt and that they can go down holes and they can get animals that go into holes like badgers and stuff. So you're going to take two dogs, two wolves that you find with short legs and breed them together. And you're going to have a whole litter of puppies that have kind of shorter legs. And then maybe you're like, hmm, these, uh, these pointy ears don't really work for me. So then you're going to find a dog that has kind of naturally occurring floppy ears and breed that with your dog that has some short legs. And you're going to have some kind of short-legged floppy ear dogs. And you do that um, over the course of a few hundred years, or a few thousand years, actually, in the case of dogs, and you wind up with wiener dogs. So you select short leg parents and flap eared parents, and slowly, over the course of many generations, we wind up with a very specific type of dog. And now, we have wiener dogs that only breed with wiener dogs, so we have these perfect little wiener dogs, but it was like... 500 plus generations of dogs that it took to do that every single generation tweaking something small a little bit shorter legs this time and then a little bit smaller feet this time and then a little bit shorter coat this time over and over and over for many generations um so let's say that we have uh two dogs here we got two wolves one of them has kind of a naturally shorter coat so they're gonna have a litter of puppies and there's gonna be a couple of puppies with short coats and a couple of puppies with long coats and we take one of those short coat puppies and um, we breed them with a dog that we found that has some floppy ears. And then those dogs have some puppies, and a few have floppy ears, and a few have straight ears. And we take those floppy ear puppies, and we keep breeding them with other dogs. And over the course of many generations, you get a Labrador. They have waterproof coats, and they have webbed feet, and they have floppy ears. But again, we're talking about hundreds of generations we make a small change or we select a parent that has a small change to breed um, and eventually those add up to a whole different breed of dog. Um, so then what all have humans artificially selected? How much have we manipulated nature? Well, kind of a lot. All of our pets have been selectively bred. All of our livestock, our food animals have been selectively bred. And all of our crops have been selectively bred. Pets have been selectively bred for, you know, to be nice because if you want a rat, then you don't want a rat that's super mean and going to bite people. So people only really breed rats that are nice rats. Same thing with cats and dogs and stuff. And then with the livestock, we want our livestock and our plants and animals to make more food and better food per plant and animal. So we pick the ones that have the best traits to get what we want. 